So today we're going to be talking about masking, and we'll start out by just going over some basic masking principles. You know, we'll start out with just sort of the white reveals, black conceals concept, and then we'll move into selective masking, and then we'll move into more advanced masking with some color range and luminosity masks. We'll start out here with this photograph. I'm just going to head into the edit module. And one thing to keep in mind with masking in Photo Raw is that every single thing that you add onto a photo, whether it's a filter or an adjustment or even new layers, they all have masks created already. So for example, if I just take a look at my screen right here and I go to my layers pane, I can go into the masking options for that layer because there's already a mask created there instantly whenever I open up that photograph or if I add on, let's say an effect, if I add a filter, that mask is created right there automatically for me. So basically all I have to do now is go back and adjust that mask to fit my photograph. So I think one of the easiest ways to understand masking is to start out with the local adjustment mask. And the reason being is that if we go to our local adjustments tab and we view our masking options for our local adjustment. So in this local adjustment, if we want to view our mask, we can click on view right here and this is going to show us our mask view. We could also go down here to the bottom of our screen. Let me just click Z on my keyboard so I can remove that brush. And we could also click this. And this will show us the mask as well. So down here at the bottom and then we can click view. <clears throat> and this is showing us our mask view. And the reason that this mask view is completely black is because whenever you add a local adjustment layer, it's not automatically applied to your photo like say a layer or a filter. You have to mask this on selectively or invert the mask to actually see that local adjustment applied. So one of the most basic things of masking is that black conceals and white reveals. So I'm actually gonna type this on here. We can move this little annotation thing. So we'll just type right here, black conceals, white reveals. So I'll just move, oh, whoops. There we go, okay, so I'm just gonna set that there as kind of a little reminder. All right, so now that we know that white reveals and black conceals, we can understand masking a little bit easier. So earlier when I was looking at that mask, I would view it and it's showing me, showing me all black. Well, that's because it's concealing that entire local adjustment for my photo and I actually have to, oops, and I actually have to apply it to my shot to see it. So there's a few different ways I can do that. And we're gonna start out with the most basic way. So in our masking options here, we have this button called invert. And what the invert button is going to do is it's just going to flop your mask. So if I have this mask view black, if I click the invert button, it's going to flip it to completely white and it's going to reveal that entire adjustment onto my photo. So if I click invert here, now it's revealing that entire adjustment, which local adjustments, every time you add a new local adjustment layer, they're automatically set to darken anyway. You can see that with this negative one, but I'll just rename this darken so it's easier to understand. So in uh, that invert button, we've actually inverted the mask and turned it white. And so if we go back up here, black conceals and white reveals. So now we're revealing this darken local adjustment layer onto our photograph. So let's turn that off here, and now let's focus on filter masks. So the local adjustment, la local adjustment mask, like I was saying earlier, whenever you apply a new local adjustment layer, it's not automatically applied to your shot. You have to go in and either invert the mask or you have to apply it selectively. That's the opposite of filters. Whenever you add a new filter, let's say a dynamic contrast filter. Whenever we add a filter in our effects tab, it's going to apply that to our shot instantly. Because if we go into our masking options for this filter, I'll just click on Surreal so we can really see it. But for the masking options for this filter, we can see that that mask view is completely white because black conceals and white reveals. So we're revealing this entire filter onto our photograph. And what we can do here, rather than uh, inverting it to apply it, because it's already applied, if we wanna selectively apply it, we could invert it 
than to black because then it's concealing that filter. And then we could go in and apply it selectively with a brush or um, something like that, which we'll get into later in the webinar. But for now, we're just kind of trying to understand the concept of masking. And literally the basic, the most basic thing you need to know is just black conceals and white reveals. Okay, so that's basically how to apply if a mask onto the entire image. But what if we want to apply it selectively? Well, there's a few different ways that you can apply a filter or a local adjustment selectively, but let's start out with our adjustment and masking brush first. So in masking, there's a few different tools that you're gonna use all the time once you start actually getting the hang of masking. And one of those is your brush. So your brush is a really handy dandy tool if you want to brush in, you know, let's say that darken local adjustment layer, or you wanna brush in a specific filter into a specific area. Those are gonna be your best friends for that. And uh, just before we get started with the brushing, a lot of people have this question, and it's what's the difference between the local adjustment brush and your masking brush? And there isn't a difference at all. They're the same thing. So if you are in your local adjustment tab and you hit the masking brush, you can still mask on to your local adjustments or vice versa. Um, so no worries if you're grabbing the wrong brush or you're doing anything. If I turn this local adjustment uh, layer on again, it's going to darken up the entire photograph because I have that mask completely white. So it's revealed onto the entire shot. But let's say I want to apply it strictly to the sky. I don't want it applied on the foreground area because this area on the bottom of the shot here doesn't really need to be darkened. If I turn this off, I kind of like the exposure in the bottom. I only really want to darken this sky area. Well, to selectively apply a local adjustment, we could use our adjustment brush. So I'll turn this adjustment brush, or sorry, I'll turn this local adjustment on. And then I'm going to go over and I'm actually going to invert the mask back to black. So if I invert this mask and I view it, now it's back to black. And it's concealing this entire local adjustment. So if I turn this local adjustment off and on, it's not doing anything to the photo because it's concealed with that mask. So to apply this selectively, I'm going to hit K on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my local adjustment brush. Now that I have my local adjustment brush selected, I'm gonna go up to my opacity. I'm gonna turn it up to 100. And now I'm gonna make sure that my mode up here in this top toolbar, I'm gonna to make sure this mode is set to paint in. And the reason that I want this mode set to paint in is because since my local adjustment layer is being concealed from my photograph, if I paint it out, if, I, if my mode was set to paint out, I wouldn't be painting anything out because nothing is there to paint out. So I have to be set to paint in to actually paint in that local adjustment. So my mode is set to paint in. My size, I can actually modify with the bracket keys on my keyboard. So right bracket's going to increase, left bracket's going to decrease. And then feathering, whenever it comes to feathering on your brush, I typically keep my feathering at 100% um, just so I have a nice soft brush edge and everything blends a little bit more naturally. Now that's not to say that you're not, there's situations where you don't need um, kind of a harder brush edge. And you do. There's definitely situations where you'd want to lower the brush edge um, softness so that it's kind of crispy and you can get a little bit more detailed. But for the most part, whenever we're masking, I typically keep my feathering at 100. And then kind of same thing for opacity as well. Uh, the reason that I keep my opacity at 100 is just so I can remove whatever mask I'm trying to remove or I can paint in any adjustment at 100% or I can remove any adjustment at 100%. And then I can always go back and I could readjust the opacity of that filter adjustment or layer to fit the photograph. Um, okay, so now that we have, we've kind of gone over the modes and the feathering and the opacity, let's just go in here and let's just paint on some of this local adjustment layer. So I'm gonna make sure that my opacity is at 100, so I'm painting on 100% of that local adjustment. And I'm actually gonna increase my brush size about right there. So now if I just click down and hold, I can brush on this local adjustment layer. And now it's gonna paint that darkness wherever I paint onto the shot, just like that. And so now if I go into that local adjustment layer and I view the mask, you can see where I painted on that white, or you can see where I painted on that, um, that dark and local adjustment layer with the white right here. So this mask view is showing me all of the white, all of the adjustment that I've actually just applied to my shot. So now if I were to view this again and invert this, it's going to flip it and now it's applied to my foreground and not my sky. So now if I view my mask, 
the whites on the bottom and not at the top, but we can always go back with invert. So now it's applied to the top again. So if I turn this local adjustment layer off and on now, it's strictly applied to the sky and it's not applied to my foreground. And that helps because the foreground is probably just the right exposure. So let's turn this dark and local adjustment layer off and then we can go over to effects and I'll show you how to selectively apply a filter with a brush real quick. So since local adjustments aren't automatically applied to your photo, you typically use your paint in mode to brush those adjustments onto your photographs. Well, with filters, they're already automatically applied to your shot. So what you need to do if you want to brush them on selectively is you could either paint them out from the areas that you want to protect, or you could paint, or, sorry, or you could invert your mask to black, and then you could paint those areas in uh, with your masking brush. So I'm going to add a filter, and let's just add dynamic contrast again. And I'll click Surreal. Actually, no, let's do black and white. So now with this black and white filter, one thing that I could do if I want to paint this on selectively is I could go into my masking options. I could invert this mask. That way it's concealed from my entire photograph. It's not being applied anywhere. And now I could do the same thing I did with my local adjustments and I could brush that in selectively. I gotta make sure my mode is set to paint in. And a quick way to actually switch your modes is to hold down shift and X on your keyboard. So you can see that switching my mode from paint out, paint in, paint out. So shift X, and that'll switch your modes for you. And uh, so now that we have our mode set to paint in, I can just use this masking brush the same as I did with my local adjustment brush. And I could just paint this black and white onto anywhere in my shot. And I can selectively apply it. And same thing, if I go back to my mask view, it's showing me in white all the areas that I painted on that filter. And if I invert it, again, it'll just flip it. So now it's applied to the top and vice versa. And the mask view, um, honestly, is one of the most underrated tools when you're actually masking because a lot of people don't view the mask. But sometimes, just like right there, if I control Z, see this little area right here? That little area right there, if I were to paint this out. So let's say I'm masking. And if I were using, um, and even right here in this corner. So if I look at this corner right here, I might not notice that that area didn't get the brush painted onto it. So if I viewed my mask, I could see, oh, well, that area is black right there. So it's obviously not getting that adjustment or filter applied to it. I could hit B on my keyboard to grab me my masking brush, shift X to go back to paint in. And then I could just paint that adjustment back into where it needs to be. Okay, so now if I go back and view this, and I turn this off and on, that black and white is only applied to the bottom area of my photograph where I selectively applied it. So let's turn this off now, and let's go back to our local adjustments tab. And so those are a couple ways that you could use your masking brush and your adjustment brush to apply filters selectively. But one thing that I typically use whenever I'm applying things selectively are gradients and shapes. And I think those are probably the most natural way to apply filters and adjustments most of the time, especially if you're working with landscapes. Because oftentimes with landscapes, you know, you have your foreground area, um, usually your subject or something um, kind of floating along there, and then you have your background. And most of the times when we're shooting with a, uh, a scene where there's a sky or a sun coming into the shot, the sky's going to be a little bit blown out or vice versa. Either you're shooting for your highlights or you're shooting for your shadows. So to fix that, you can selectively apply local adjustments and filters, and you can add in darkness to the sky to dim it down, or you can brighten up the foreground if it's a little too dark. So the gradients and shapes are probably the most natural way to apply filters and adjustments. So let's start with those right now. So in our local adjustments tab, let's say I want to apply that same darkened adjustment to my sky area, but I want to do it in a little bit more natural way. Well, the best way to do that is with a reflect, or not a reflected gradient, with just a gradient mask. So I'm gonna click on my adjustment here. I'm gonna rename it Darken again. I'm gonna go into the masking options. And our mask is set to invert, or our mask is set to black because it's not applied to our photograph. So we, have, we actually have to apply this selectively to see anything done to the shot. So 
I'm going to hold down shift and hit K on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my adjustable gradient. So now with my adjustable gradient selected, I'm going to go up to my top toolbar here. And in these presets, it has different presets. That's it's basically going to modify the mask with gradients, or it's going to modify the mask with a shape to create sort of a vignette look. So you can see in here with the right or the, the left side here, it has these little thumbnails. And this is showing us the preview of what that mask is going to do. So for example, linear bottom, I can see here on the bottom, it's black. So it's protecting that area from the mask. And then the top part is white. So it's revealing that area. Um, it's revealing that filter onto that area. So we're going to click linear bottom because we want the mask to be applied to the top of our image where the sky is. And now all we need to do is we just head over to our horizon line. We'll just drop it down and voila. Now if we turn this off and on, it's using a gradient to blend this in with the photo better. So if I go and I view my mask now, if I hover over this, it has this little gradient tool that I can use to modify the mask. So this big handle right here, this is going to allow me to move this gradient around my scene. This little handle is going to allow me to rotate the um, gradient. So I can rotate the gradient. And this is really helpful if you're shooting in like a valley or something and you have trees kind of swooping down. You can tilt your gradient this way and tilt it this way to um, make sure that it's a lot, a lot more natural of a uh, adjustment. And one thing you could also do is you could feather it. So with the preferred edges right here, if I pull up or down on them, it's going to feather that gradient and it's going to look a lot more natural when it's blended into your shot. So now look over here at our mask view. We can see that it's a lot more um, elongated and the protected area is blending in a lot better with the top area where the filter is act or the adjustment is actually applied. So now if we view this and we turn this off and on, it just seems like a little bit more natural of a adjustment compared to when we brushed it in with the adjustment brush. So now let's go and I'll show you how to do that with a filter. Basically the same thing. Go to the effects tab. Let's add, let's just do a photo filter to show. So now we have this blue on our photo, but let's say we want the blue applied to the sky area only. Well, we can hit M on our keyboard. That's going to grab the masking bug. And this is another common question is what's the difference between the adjustable gradient and the masking bug? And there is no difference So the exact same thing. So every tool in the local tools and every tool in the masking tools besides your AI quick mask. Um, let's see here actually. Yeah, so everything in your masking tools besides the AI quick mask is the same thing as your local adjustment tool. So your local adjustment brush is the same as your masking brush and your masking bug is the same as your adjustable gradient. Okay, so now I have my local adjustment gradient, right? Oh, no, going back to effects. So now I need my masking bug, getting ahead of myself. I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard to grab myself my masking bug. Now I'm gonna drop this down. If I feather this, same thing. Feather it a bit, pull it up. And now if I turn this off and on, see how it's applying that nice blue color to the sky now, but it's not making any of the area in the foreground look too color casted. And then if I go in and I view my mask, same thing here. We're using that gradient to blend this um, adjustment in with the bottom area of our photograph. So we're basically protecting our foreground and then we're blending the adjustment as we go up so that its strongest point is at the top of our photo. Okay, so that's some of the most basic stuff that we're gonna go over and then we'll just move on to some other photographs and kind of playing with these um, basic adjustments and then we'll move on to some more advanced masks. Are there any questions before I move on to the next shot? Take this annotate thing down. There we go.
All right, no questions. We can just keep trucking along here. Okay, so now we'll move on to this photograph. And this is another kind of prime example of when you'd want to use selective masking. So let's say, for example, we want to add in some detail. Um, but we can see up here that we have these clouds in the sky that have a little bit of contrast on them. So if we do add in any detail to the photograph, majority of that detail, or some of that detail, is going to go into the contrast into these clouds, and it's going to crunch them up a bit. Now, just kind of personal uh, preference, I don't really like a bunch of crunchiness in my clouds. Now, I don't really, um, I definitely don't mind if there's you know, detail in the clouds, but just for the sake of the video, let's go in here and let's try to selectively apply some detail real quick and then avoid it being applied to the sky. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a filter. I'll add dynamic contrast. And let's go in here and I'm going to pull up on my small. And then I'm going to pull back on the shadow tones. And that's going to kind of richen up these areas where I want the detail applied. I really only want the detail applied in this foreground and on this building. But if I turn this off and on, if I zoom into the sky area here, so if I turn this off and on now with the sky, you can see it adds in a ton of detail to the sky, and I really don't want that applied there. So to selectively apply this, I'm going to first use my masking brush. So I'm going to hit M on my, or I'm going to hit B on my keyboard to grab me my masking brush. I'm going to lower my brush size a little bit. And then I'm going to head up to my mode. I'm going to make sure it's set to paint out. You know what, let's do it this way. So I'm going to go over to my dynamic contrast filter. <clears throat> and whenever you're selectively applying a filter, I typically do it this way, where I go into my masking options, and I invert the mask, and then I apply it selectively by painting it in. So let's go into our dynamic contrast filter. We'll invert this mask. And now we can actually just paint it in selectively. So I'm just going to hit the, back, or the bracket keys on my keyboard to increase my brush size. And then I'm just going to paint this in to the bottom area of my shot. Just like that. And then I'll lower it a bit again. And then I'll paint this on the building here. Perfect. So now if I turn this dynamic contrast filter off and on, it's only applied to the foreground area. And it's not applied to the sky. And it's not crunching up those clouds anymore. So if I view this mask now, you can see that it's applied to that bottom area in the mask with all of that white. So let's actually reset this. Oops, I don't want to reset the filter. We'll view this again. So now our mask is completely white, meaning it's applied to the entire photograph. And let's say we want to apply this detail to our shot, but we don't want to apply it at 100%. We want to lower our opacity on our brush and apply it with a lower opacity. So we're going to go into our masking options again. We're going to invert that mask so that we can paint it on selectively. Now we're going to go up to our masking brush options here in this top tool modifier bar. And I'm going to go to my mode. I'm set to paint in. My feathering's at 100. But now I'm going to lower my opacity. And that's going to brush this filter on uh, a lot less intensely. So it's going to be around 64% opacity. So it's only going to paint about 64% of that filter onto my shot. So let's go down here. And I'll increase my brush size. Now I'll paint this on. And you can see it's already not applying as strong of a filter because I've already lowered that opacity to my brush. So now if I go over and I view this mask, where I painted in that filter, it's not completely white now. It's gray. Well, that's because anything in between that white and that black it's meaning that it's applying that filter or adjustment at a lower opacity. And you're not seeing it completely applied. You're only seeing part of it applied, or a portion of it applied to your shot. Um, that's just a basic way of blending in stuff to your photograph. So if you don't want you know, a filter applied too strongly, you could lower your opacity. But like I was saying earlier, you can always go into your filter here. So if we raise our opacity to 100, and we paint this on, I can go into my dynamic contrast filter, and I can lower the opacity of the filter. Oops, let's view the mask, or view the photo. I can lower the opacity of that filter, and that will remove it from my shot so I can blend it in a little bit more. So that's what I typically do, is I typically brush it on at 100, and then I'll usually lower my opacity down to 0, and then kind of incrementally pull it up. And then that kind of gets me a good starting point to where I can blend it in. 
if I lower the opacity here, it's not as strong. So this is just two kind of options that you can use. Um, once you start playing with the masks, you'll kind of figure out what way works best for you. Um, no way is wrong, so um, probably the best way to do it is just play with them. You know, play with the sliders, start playing around with um, the brushes and whatnot, and you'll, you'll kind of develop a workflow for your own masking uh, techniques.